To do that, we need to create a new folder, CSS, and create a new file called style.css. Next, as we learned, we need to import that file, and we'll do it up here. Link, rel, it is a style sheet. And where can we find this style sheet? We can find it within the CSS folder and it's called style.css. Now, if you need to check to make sure it works, apply a background to the body. That's an easy way. Come back and preview it and now we are loading our style sheet. So that's the next step. Let's get started styling this to look similar to what we have right here. First, because we don't have a full website, I'm going to use the body element as a wrapper. We'll give it a width of, say, 500 pixels and position it in the center of the page and we're going to use the margin auto technique that we learned in a previous lesson. Now that's centered on the page. The next step is, notice how this image, this featured image, is floated to the left as you can see right there. So let's compensate for that. Now we can target this image by going back to our HTML file and looking for where we import that image. But I've also noticed a mistake I made here. I opened the header, but I didn't close it. We want to close the header element right after the metadata because the main content area is not the header, it's the main content for this wrap. So that is more appropriate. Now, we could apply a class to this image and you would do that if there are multiple images within here. Now, what if, for example, in WordPress, it'll turn smiley faces into images as well. So you need to be thinking about that. Can you target image elements directly or generically, or do you need to apply a class? For now, we'll keep it very simple. So to target it, we go to a class of content wrap and then find an image element. So let's do that now. Content wrap image element. Now we could also do this technique, and this means, we learned this before, find an image element that is a direct child of content wrap. For example, if we had an image element within here, it would not be targeted because this is a direct child of the header element. It is not a direct child of the content wrap. This is a relatively new this is a relatively new feature and it's not supported in every browser. So for now, I want to keep it simple and use this form. Now, how can we make it float all the way to the left? To do so, we can use a property conveniently called float. And that means take it out of the flow of the document. Now, that term is not 100% accurate. It's not applicable in all cases. But for your skill level right now, it should make sense. For example, if I float this to the left, watch what happens when I preview it. Notice how now it's floated to the left and everything comes up above it. But now we need some spacing to the right here. So we could use a measuring tool or for this demo, we'll keep it simple and use our eyes. So I want to give some padding to the right. Maybe we can provide around 30 pixels. Padding, right, 30 pixels worth of breathing room. Notice how now we have more room there. Let's also make sure we do the same thing below it. Padding, bottom. View it again, and now we've given it a lot more breathing room. But again, notice how this text is all shifted to the right and this image is on the left. Why is that? And it's because we floated this image to the left, but as soon as the boundaries of this image cut off, everything then begins per usual, like you can see right here. So how can we specify that all of this content over here needs to be over to the right? If we want to target all of this content right here, how can we do that? Well, why don't we try this? Why don't we wrap the main content area within a div and we'll give it a class of content body. And the advantage to this is now, whenever we need to position any of that main text, we can do so easily by referencing this wrapper. Let's try it now. Content, body, margin left, and I'm going to set the margin left to 230 pixels. Now the reason I'm doing that is because I know this big image is 200 pixels. And I also know that its padding right is 30. So to line everything up right here, let's make sure that the margin left is equal to 200 plus 30, which is 230. And now those are lined up nicely. The next step is to focus on coloring. So if I click here and I choose control click inspect element, I can view everything I need to know about this element right here. So if I go to computed style, I can see that the color is 57, 57, 57. So let's try that out now. Come back and we'll say the content body, the color should be that. 
And notice we have updated. So a couple of things worth noting here. If this will be the standard text, the standard color for your entire website, in that case, why don't you be more generic and put it within the body element? That way it'll apply to all of the text by default. Next, we know that this heading should be black. So let's do that right now. And we can target it by doing H2A, black. Good. Also, it should not have that underline. And in CSS, that's referred to as text decoration underline, like so. But instead, I want none. So I'm going to get rid of that. Next, we need to figure out what kind of text this is. So once again, I will right click, inspect element, computed styling, and now I can see the font is Helvetica and Arial. Now these are very close and they are the defaults for most browsers. So we also have the option here of saying font family, Helvetica, Arial, or we could do sans serif and it will default to that as well. Good, we're starting to get there, aren't we? The next step is to measure the height of the text. So once again, inspect element, view this paragraph, come down to font size, and it is 14 pixels. It also has a line height of 20 pixels. We'll place that within our body. Font size, 14 pixels, and that's updated. But now notice when I set a line height, and this is something you'll be familiar with. Watch if I set it to 30. That is the height of each line. If I set it to 50, there you are. And if I set it to 20, that's much more appealing. But notice how line height is affecting everything here. And really, we only want it affecting the paragraphs. So instead, I can place that within paragraph tags, like so. But also, we've updated the headings here to the new font, but we haven't done the same thing to the text. So if we know there are going to be the same fonts by default, again, go to the parent, the topmost parent. That way, it'll trickle down or cascade down to everything else. There we are. Next, let's focus on the links. So I will come back and we can see here that the links are this greenish color. So let's find out exactly what they are. Inspect element, computed styling, or come here and we can see that this is the color. I will copy that and come back and we'll say all anchor tags, the color is this hex value. There we are, much better. Now let's just do a little bit more here. This metadata needs to flow to the left rather than each being on their own line. We learned how to do this in a previous lesson. First, I will clean up my area so that all my general styling is at the top, and then I get more specific as I go below. So we will say cat meta. Now we are targeting this unordered list right here. And we're going to make sure that its list items default to a display of inline. There we are. Next, let's provide some breathing room. So padding right. On each one, give it 20 pixels of breathing room. Or we can see here it's very short, and we'll set that to 10. Notice how each of these are separated by a backslash. There are a couple ways to do this. The wrong way is to hard code that into your markup. So you'd never want to do anything like this, like so, or like that. Instead, we can make CSS take care of this for us. Now, this is a little bit advanced for your level, but it's okay. We can specify with a pseudo class to add content after the list item. So what this means is right after this list item, we're going to add content. What content are we going to add? Content, and within quotes, a backslash. Now, I want you to notice that's not showing up. So if we type gibberish, that is showing up after each one. But why isn't a simple backslash? And that's because that is a reserved symbol. When you are coding, a backslash most often means escape it. So if we want to say we're literally referring to a backslash rather than the simple, we need to double that. And now you will see that take shape. But it's right up against the text right there. Let's give it some breathing room. Padding left, 10 pixels. And next, let's remove the padding right from all list items and apply it here padding right 10 pixels. Now, if that is too much, you can lower it to, and I think that'll be fine for now. Now, I want you to notice how when you use this method, you're applying content after every list item, even the very last one. But if we return, we can see that there is no backslash after the last one. So we can get rid of that by saying cat meta li 
last child. This is again a pseudo class that allows us to target one specific element. So when we say last child, we're saying go to the cat meta, get all the list items, but then filter that down to the very last child. And then we say after content nothing. And now that has successfully been removed. Or if we want to add something else, you can see that working there. So that's a good trick to know. Pseudo classes in CSS are very powerful. Finally, let's take care of this right here. Notice how there's a grayish background. Let's find out what color that is. Here it is, F3. So we'll come down to the bottom and I'm going to say meta background and paste that in and paste that in. Now you can see there's a background color, but also we have some breathing room around it. So why don't we give some padding all around around three pixels. Next, I want you to notice that although anchor tags are green by default, right here, they're all the same color. Additionally, let's see if the text size is the same. Puted styling, font size is 14 pixels. It is italic. Always pick up these small things. And the color is 61. So let's do that right now. Color is 6161. The font style is italic. And finally, we will trickle down to the anchor tags. And I'm going to say the color should also be this color. Now we could do it like this and that will work, but we can also use a keyword called inherit. And that means go to your parent and inherit whatever its attributes are. Let's try that, inherit. And notice we get the same effect with the advantage that we're not writing the same values in over and over. So we're more or less done here. We just want to do two more things. First, the continue button should be on the far right. So we can use that nifty float keyword again. We can target it by using more link float right. And now that's pushed to the right edge of its immediate container. And the last thing is, do you notice here that this wrapper is overflowing over into this image area? And that's because we have applied some margin left to content body right here, but that is not affecting this meta information right here. So why don't we double up just to make sure that it receives a margin left as well. And lastly, we want to give it a little more breathing room because if we return, you can see that it has some breathing room here. Now I want to stress in a real world application, if you received a Photoshop file from a company and they want you to convert it for them, you can't guess, you should do the measuring yourself. But for this situation, I think we can get away with it. I will scroll down and I'm going to update the padding right here from three pixels all around and maybe six is a little bit better. So let's come back, expand this, and it looks like it's not quite big enough. So we can fix that easily by coming to the body and updating the width to 600 pixels. We have our links, we have our floated image, we have our heading. Now, did we test what the size of the heading is? Well, we can do that right now. Right click, inspect element, computed styles, and it's 40 pixels. So I'm going to make sure that it says that. Font size, 40 pixels. And now that looks very much like what we have on NetTouch. The only last thing I notice is that the line height here is less than what it is here. But let's verify that. Line height, 44 pixels. And there we are. With minimal work, we've done a really good job of mimicking what we have on NetTouch. Good job, you're well on your way to becoming a web designer.